author. Got several DVDs and books out there, and just uh, a well-known uh, public speaker and a helpful being in this reality. Med medicine and mojo like you ain't never seen, baby. Welcome, brother. Appreciate you being on the show. Good you. morning, Coyote. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Man. Yeah. Uh, that, what did you want to talk about right off? You wanted to talk about how you got where you got, right? Can you tell us? Uh, what got you into the medicine movement? What got you going in the flow here? Man? Well, that, that's a good place to start at. You know, when, when I got into the healing traditional Native American way, I didn't ask for it. I was drug in with coyote medicine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I got in. That's the way it works, man, yeah. And um, one day I was at a big event, and this one person had a bunch of people behind tugging at the shirts going oh teach me show me story and then I had a booth there where I had a table with some buffalo skulls and I think I had one CD back then maybe and this teacher just said you come with me <laughs> and I'm looking around like you, you pointing at me it's like you got 10 people scooping around you I didn't say nothing to you you know just come and walk with me and that was my first teacher Wow. I didn't know it, yeah. but once the teacher had chosen me and didn't really tell me for a whole year, that teacher did everything they could to dissuade me from going on the Red Road Medicine thing. I'm wow. going, wait a minute, you asked me. I didn't ask you. Now you're dissuading me? <laughs> Reverse psychology, perhaps. <laughs> it was more of the testing process yeah. because any healer worth their salt, I believe, will not just take anyone the first time you see them with their eyeballs. You need to test them and see what they're made out of because everything that you've learned and trained in should not be shared with just anybody. It has to be special kind of altruistic people who are here to serve others, and most people are here to serve themselves. Yeah, unfortunately, that's been the way it's been. We're changing all that now. Yeah, it's been that way. And then my, my second teacher... Uh, wasn't even a year later, I was at a mountain man gathering up in Washington State. And this gal named Twin Hawks, because she throws two tomahawks at the same time and sticks them both. Wow. She's got six kids, a husband, and a teacher. Yeah, he's oh, a, man. a well behaved man. <laughs> a husband, yeah. And we used to do a little trading here and there. And she came up to me in this mountain man rendezvous and says, Hey, you got to meet this medicine man. And I said, Why? And she says, Well, I don't know. You just got to meet him. I said, all right, bring him over. So it was about an hour later, and here comes this old guy who looks like a bear with this big old belly and his bow legs, you know, and this long old <laughs> hair, you know. He walks right up to me two inches from my nose, and he looked me straight in the eye. And he looked me from head to toe. It seemed like for ten minutes, but, you know, it was just a real close personal thing. And he goes, so you're a two-feather, huh? And I go, yep. <laughs> and he says, come with me. So we walked out into the parking lot, and he, he, he had this brand new black SUV. Yeah. And Indians don't got brand new black SUVs. They got res cars. Yeah. yeah. You know, three windows roll up, but one don't, you know, yeah, three yeah. tires don't match, but yeah. the brakes don't work, but the radio works. That's what's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, radio. <laughs> so I I'm, I'm thinking, who is this guy, man? He's got a brand new SUV, man, black one with chrome rims, and he's in the back like a bear throwing everything around the back going, <laughs> and then he comes out with this flute that has two barrels on it side by side. Wow. One's a drone, and it has this beautiful red coral fetish on it with black coral, red coral, and mother of pearl because wow. his signature was a bear claw. Yeah. With these little intricate pieces, and he and he, he gave it to me. This is a, a thousand dollar flute, wow, handmade, one of a kind. He gave it to me, and I was just going, wow. He says, do like this. He says, put your hands like this and do this. He said, he gave me the flute. He says, go away and learn that. He says, when you know how to do that, call me up. He gave me his phone number. Wow. But the thing is that for a, almost a year, he was convincing me not to go on the Red Medicine Road like my first teacher did. And I'm going, hey, wait a minute. I've already been through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so long story short, you know, because we're just getting started here, I didn't even realize he was one of my teachers 
until about six months later, and then it just hit me one day, like, oh, man, he's my teacher. Yeah. And then we have to do the gifting process because in our way, before uh, a medicine person takes on an apprentice, there's a gift involved. Yeah, yeah. And the would-be apprentice gives a gift to the teacher. Yeah. And if the teacher accepts a gift, gift that means that the would-be apprentice can ask one question. Doesn't mean they can get an answer. It means they can ask a question. Yeah, yeah. So any teacher worth their salt will not just take a student first time they see them, even if they've been working together. So the way the traditional rules, as I've been trained, is you can ask a teacher four times to honor each one of the four directions, but you do not ask five times because that's disrespectful. So they want to turn <laughs> you down the first one, yeah. and then the next gift has to be bigger and better. Yeah. And they'll take that and they'll turn you down that one. And you say, oh, who is this guy coming back for a third time? You know, he must yeah, know something because yeah. most people won't even come back a second time because they were rejected. Yeah, yeah. But I knew the rules, four directions, four times. And he took me on the third time. Cool. I brought this big bull buffalo skull that I worked on for three months with needles and polish. And you could smile in this buffalo skull and see your reflection with the caps polished and everything. Yeah, yeah. So the, I pulled up in a pickup truck and I had it in the back because usually we meet on a Harley's. So here two guys would come, you know, Indian guys come in on Harley's, go into a park and we take out our flutes and start playing. <laughs> <They're> going, oh. <laughs> so when I brought this buffalo skull, I had it covered up and I says, hey, uh, look at this. And I put his head over the truck and I pulled the blanket up and he goes, oh, and he goes, oh. <laughs> like he didn't notice it. And so when he took that gift, man, I, I didn't want to do the four-time thing, you know. I wanted yeah, to do it once. Just once, and that's it. Because i already been through the four-time thing. So he took it, and I became his apprentice. And my third teacher was given to me by a council of elders at a ceremony and said, you have a teacher in this tribal system, and you have a teacher in that tribal system, Southwest. What about from your own bloodline, Apache? I said, well, I don't have a teacher. I don't look for teachers. They, they come to me. They, they, they choose me. I don't, I don't look for them. And they said, well, we're going to find you the highest teacher we can find in your bloodline, in your tribe line. And they did. It took about six months. And this grouchy old guy called me up, and he goes, is this two feather? And I'm going, yes. Uh, well, I, I said, who is it? I'm asking a question, Drown. You're not you. <laughs> and I go, oh, Real man, science. I know who this yeah, is, man. you know. And he yeah. says, I trained all my apprentices already all my life, you know, and I'm done with that stuff. But now the council tells me i got to train you, and, and I ain't going to train you. I said, what do you want to do? He says, answer this question. And he gave me a question, and he says, call me in a week, and hung up. Wow. I didn't know his phone number. I didn't know his name. And then I had to pull up all the phone records, you know, and go through all this big old thing to find out how to get them. And then, is a week five days, or is a week seven days? <laughs> and all this stuff, you know, is just yeah. churning up in my stomach, knowing that he doesn't want to train me, yeah. knowing that he wants to trick me. I feel coyote medicine all around me, you know, but I've already been through this with two teachers, and he's the third one, so I've already been through it twice. So I passed the test, passed the test, and after about a year, he accepted me as apprentice. Cool. He called me over to his house up in the mountains with the big redwood trees, and I didn't know it, but he raises wolves. And I'm talking about the ones from Alaska, the yeah. real wolves. Yeah. And I pulled up on my Harley. I had this big uh, gift on the back of my Harley, and he had put ten wolves, five on each side, on ropes, nose to nose, between the driveway and the door. Wow. Ten wolves. Wow. And they were touching nose, and you know, wolves don't bark or anything, they just snarl a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and I, had to, I had to walk through all ten of them to get to his front door. And I knew that was a test. And so I prayed, and I, I put my hands together. I put white light around me. I filled it up with a color blue, uh, green to represent Mother Earth. And I, I looked forward, and I slowly walked in a very mechanical way to the door. And when I got to the door, this half-German shepherd, half-wolf jumped out and sat in front of the door right at my crotch level as I was knocking on the door, knock, knock, knock. And someday, you know, I want to have more children. <laughs> He's like, junkyard dog. And I knew he was inside the door, and I'd never seen him. 
knock, 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 knock. And finally he opened the door and he, with the back of his hand, he, he smacked this wolf German Shepherd sideways and knocked him sideways. And he was so big, he couldn't even fit in the door. He had to bend down. He's like six foot seven. Ex Navy SEALs. He's so big that when I put my arms around him, I can barely get to the edge of his shoulders. Holy this is a humongous <laughs> man. And, and he says, come in. So I walked in the door, and I stayed right there, and I closed the door behind me, and I didn't go any further into the room because he wants to nick me on protocol. Oh, so finally he gestured me inside the room, and then I wouldn't sit down because I didn't know which one was his seat. And then finally he says, all right, all right, sit in that chair. And he says, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. He's going, man, this guy got some, some background on him, man. You know, everything I'm doing ain't working. Because <laughs> he wanted to get rid of me right off the bat, like with the wolves, you know. Oh, yeah, he would tear yeah. me up on the way in. He didn't have to take his time to train me. Yeah. So anyway, that was kind of a long thing, but th that's how I got started. Wow. Cool. And so then these people taught you, and then something, Ten years. something led you then to go and start sharing. They told me in the beginning that, you know, if I walk on this path as a healer, uh -huh. that you're not going to have a family. You're not going to have wealth. You're not going to have, you're not going to have, you're not going to do, you can't participate in, la, 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 la. So I was under no illusions. When I started this medicine walk for a year, their mission was to dissuade me. Yeah. To make sure that I had what it took to be the altruistic, and that's what it takes in, as a healer, to be an altruistic persona. Yeah. And any client that I worked on in the last 15 years, I could twist their neck too much and give them a whiplash. I could pull their leg out of the socket or I could do some harm to them, and they'll take everything I have. Not only the clothes on my back and my car and my bank accounts, which you know, they could take my freedom and lock me up. Sure. Put me naked in a cell. All for one person. I don't even know their name. So it takes a, a certain kind of person to do this kind of work. Yeah. And they want to know that all their years of training is going to the right place for the right reason. Yeah. And that is to serve the people. Yeah. Beautifully, beautifully said. Beautifully said. Brother. Uh -huh. And awesome and an amazing movement of heart, you know, that people can be this dedicated in a very real way, you know, based flesh in, and blood, based in tradition, based in earth, based uh, in generations and ancestors, and somewhere along the way, an eagle or two, I'm sure they're part of that energy, that Absolutely. family line. You know? mm -hmm. So it's just amazing how, you know, we all come, we all have this different path, and everyone. You know, one person specializes over here, one person specializes over here, one person specializes over here. Yet, we all mix together so well. You know, the melody of all energies and all hearts and all practice. That's the fire we talk about. Building things down. So, we come from these places where we've been like, wow. Deep. But we go even deeper. We go even further. We uh, never stay set in place. Yeah, that's you never think, I mean, I've had people in this town tell me they're completely enlightened, they've got it all down, they don't need to do any more work, they're done. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, that's why congratulations, they're still here, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> can I come walk on water with you tomorrow, baby? Is that, <laughs> well, that, flying, yeah. that specialization was a really good point because when you train the way I have in traditional Native American healing work, we have specialties. Yeah. yeah. And for the first few years, my teachers would ask me, what will you specialize in? I said, well, I'm not sure. Ask me in the summer. Then my other teacher would say, what do you want to specialize in? I said, well, ask me in the winter. And that worked for a couple of years. But one day I was at uh, one of my teacher's house, the big guy. Yeah. And he said, my son, tonight when you go to sleep, he said, you won't sleep. Because tomorrow morning when you come down here, I'm going to have a blanket on the ground. I was going, oh, man. That means I had to decide. That night, because he said, when I come down in the morning, i got to sit on a blanket. And he's going to ask me my answer. What will you specialize in? And I had no choice except to say it. I could have been a child specialist. I could have been a skin specialist. I could have been a head doctor. I could have been an uh, internal organ doctor. And out of plants as well, because my... my 
great grandmother was a plant medicine healer for our tribe. Yeah. Her mother was a healer, and her father was a healer. So I, on my dad, my mom's side, I come from a long line of healers. Yeah. I just didn't know it, but my teachers knew it. But they never told me in ten years. Well, of course not. Got to find it out yourself, I mean. <laughs> and and what is my gift? Because healers have special gifts. What is my gift? They knew what my gift was for ten years, and they never told me. I was out in the healing world for three years before I found out my gift was with bones. And I was a, basically a bone doctor. But when I had to make the choice, my choice was spiritual advisor. So my official title in all places, people love to have titles, is spiritual advisor. But I consider myself a medicine person because that's what I do professionally. I just finished uh, my... 14th trip around the world, and that was 20 countries wow. promoting the five books. And I was only going to be gone for a year, but it took a year and a half. Wow. So I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, you got the travel to boot, man. Hell, you can't beat that. Nothing like rounding yourself out and getting right with life, man. Travel does that, it exposes you to everything, don't it? Everything and people say, well, how do you get along to, Feather? How do you pay your airplane tickets and stuff? Well, first off, usually I have a host family in each country. Yeah. And the host family picks me up at the airport, they take me home to their home, I get to use their cars or they transport me and they feed me and they, they find the venues for me and then they make the introductions and they drive me over there, you know, and make sure I get on time and it all works out. Cool. But the money comes in a little bit, but it's enough only to get to the next place. Yeah. Yeah. And then the money comes in a little bit and it's only enough to get to the next place. So I can't go to the to the big stores, you know, and buy a $50 pair of pants, you know, I don't mind going to a thrift store and buying a pair of pants, it's okay, you know, because oh, yeah. that's just the way it is. Yeah, and that's beautiful. You know, there's so many practitioners in this world of, of uh, lesser sincerity. They get into the thousands of dollars, and they probably can't do anywhere near the kind of work you do, but then, you know, they, and of course, then there's mistakes made. So. Wow. I can appreciate your position. Uh -huh. I really can. I mean, I know it's a tough, it's tough road hard. to walk. Yeah, it is. But it's also at the same time, you can't be more blessed. You, you're one of the richest men you know. Actually, <laughs> in, in the non-monetary way, yes, I would agree exactly. with that, you know, yeah. in many ways. Yeah, it's like, you know, that's the beauty of living that kind of life. When you share with, I, this is what I found in my life, when you share with others, you're sharing with yourself, big time. It always comes back. It doesn't mean money. It means satisfaction. It means contentment. It means unraveling all the little undivine mysteries inside of yourself and getting them right. We have a saying inside the trade. It says, give a healing, get a healing. Exactly. And we don't give a healing because we want something in return. Yeah. But there is the natural or the universe. Whether you want it or not, there's gravity. Whether you want it or not, there's ripples. Yeah. Whether you want it or not, there's vibrational frequencies. In all of these, we work with in healing. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Would you like to know how we use vibrational frequencies specifically in healing work? Sure. If you want to share that, you can. I'd love to. Okay. There's a particular cadence on a drum that we could put for 12 to 14 minutes. And in 12 to 14 minutes, the client who's laying on the table at a specific cadence their immune systems exponentially explode. Huh. And the way it works, the way I, I understand it is, we have a hundred immune soldiers on duty at all times. Yeah. You get a sty in your eye or a pink lip or you get a bruise or a cut, the hundred soldiers from the immune system go out there and fix it. Yeah. Or maybe 30 of them go and then 40 stay in, in, in reserve. But the fact of the matter is, there's actually a thousand immune system soldiers but 900 soldiers are in the barracks. And Mon Capitan, you know, Herr General, he's in charge of all the 900 immune system soldiers that are in the barracks. And they're all in there playing video games and playing cards and doing stuff. But what the cadence of the drum does is it goes in in 12 to 14 minutes and lets the general know that I'm communicating with the general. So when the communication channel is open, I let the general know that your 900 men in the barracks, immune system soldiers, need to come out and go to work because I'm calling on you. So I don't tell the 900 soldiers what to do. I ask the general if he will tell his 900 soldiers to come out. And then when they do, 300 immune system soldiers go to the heart because they got an angina problem. 
200 soldiers go to the prostate because they got a prostate problem, and then 100 soldiers go to the left kneecap because they're going to have to get a knee replacement. And when the immune system exponentially is called on in that way, I come from the outside and hit it from the outside and would trap the methyl ethyl bad stuff in the middle, so to speak. Yeah. So that's kind of the mechanics. Well, that's, that's rough. And yeah, it's a lot the way I've seen it in my work, too. Different ways. But yeah, the same thing. It's beautiful. It's a mechanics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the body is incredibly empowered. Oh, I unbelievable. Mean, that, I mean, I've seen them myself in all kinds of those kind of, and I've seen it in others, too, many, many times. If a person is in the right mind, there's nothing that can hold you back. Not the body, not anything. And the body loves us enough to heal instantly of broken bones, etc. I mean, it can go to some pretty far stretches, as you well know, and uh, bring us right back into life every time. That's why we do these risky things. That's why we go to the places we go with illness and injuries and stuff. Because we challenge in our life our ability of being, our ability to appreciate, you know. So we make it a little difficult for us. So, so we can deepen the appreciation once you get through the, 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 the sour side of the psychology. Then you start to mature into a, a deeper way of understanding yourself. Well, and, and it, nothing like an accident or illness to slow you down and get you to do that. You know? An easy way to see this is the words of a wise man who once said, "Whatever I can do." you can do and more yeah and this wise man has a name jesus yeah. but the strange thing about it is jesus it's us yeah, yeah, us. yeah. allah said the same thing buddha said the same thing yeah. so here's these great teachers in different time periods and different parts of the world all saying the same thing what's yeah. going on here the truth is the truth no matter what this is what it all boils down to and this is what i've discovered in my many journeys around the world wearing a medicine hat, walking in under a medicine umbrella to a culture like the Maoris in New Zealand or the Druids in, in the Highlands of Scotland, yeah. in the Scottish Highlands, Lassie. Yeah. And walking as a medicine person under this, I go to the other medicine people who are very uh, anxious to share and also to know yeah. where we're coming from. And yeah. that's what I'm here today to talk about where we're coming from as a Native American nation. So where are you coming from as a Native American nation? We're coming from that life can be the way we say it can be in many aspects. And if you say that your life will be dedicated to serving others, this is our way. Our way is being caretakers of Mother Earth because we consider the generations that have not been born yet and many people are living in the here and now. Now there's a time for the here and now because when I was 14 months in Australia and I was out back studying with the Aboriginal elders, they have this thing called dream time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with dream time, but myself personally, my medicine animal is a hawk and hawk medicine is future vision. Doesn't mean you could see the future, but when I do things, it's how is what I'm doing now gonna affect the future? in a week, in a month, in two generations from now. Yeah. This is hawk medicine besides the medicine of action. Yeah. Cool. Part of the reason why my teachers chose me. They knew that I had a background in medicine in my bloodline, but I didn't know. I didn't even know what kind of Indian I was until my mom was 55. Wow. And I always knew I was Indian, but I didn't know what kind. But when my great-great-aunt died, uh, I had to drive my other great great aunts because they couldn't drive and they were talking about my grandpa. Well, I always had a grandpa and grandma on my dad's side, but I only had a grandma on my mom's side. Yeah. Because my mom was part of the stolen generation. Yeah. And she was stolen and raised by somebody else. And when we went to great great aunt's funeral, she mentioned something when I was driving about my grandpa. And I'm going, what? And I was out of the Marine Corps on, on uh, leave. Yeah. I said, well, what do you mean, my grandpa? She says, yeah, when your mommy was a little baby. I used to take her to her grandmother's house, but it was a big secret because my mom was born out of wedlock. Ah. And back in them days, you oh, didn't do that. yeah, that was crazy, crazy stuff. So my mom had to be hidden away and shuffled away and not ever knew. And when she was 55 and found out who her grandpa was, my mom never took a vacation. Wow. She always worked through her vacation. And when she retired on one job, she went and got another job and retired off that job. Wow. So my mom was always a, a nuts and bolts kind of never sick a day of her life ever wow. never once and she went on 
took vacation and went over there to uh, southern New Mexico and knocked on the guy's door and he says, I don't have no children. My wife's infertile. And she says, no, I'm, I'm your daughter. And he says, well, let's go have a blood test at the hospital. My mom said, let's go. I'll pay for it. <laughs> and they went and did the blood test and sure enough, that was her father. And now I had a grandpa and that's how I knew I was Apache. <laughs> 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 and life in his wild ways, baby. It's, it's, so, it's so gracious, it really is. It's so beautiful. Whoa. The tales and the poetic irony in our lives is just so dark. Tricky love. It's a, that just falls. <laughs> 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 Babies, we're going to put a little wind under our wings, get a little flight here, help you let all this good energy settle in. Two feathers and I hope. Babies, you're tuned to the Coyote Medicine Show, only on the Hazy Radio Network. Babies, you're a ticket to fly here in the great daylight, the sun rising in your heart. Got a special guest here with us today. I hope you heard the introductory interview. Uh, it went on for a good half hour. Baby. William Tufet, well-known native healer, author, lecturer, you know, spirit guide, spirit advisor. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I have I have the same terminology for myself, spirit advisor. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The spirits advise me to get the hell down the road. <laughs> yeah, well, one thing to remember about that, as it is above, so it is below. Absolutely, baby. Yeah. So here, there's good and bad. Above us, there's also good and bad. So I do work with spirit on a regular basis, particularly in healing and spiritual counseling, but I only work with the spirits from the light cool. because I have free will and that's one of the strongest tools we have as human beings and part of my mission is empowerment people give their power away so easily and it, sometimes it's not so easy to get back once you've given it away yeah well I mean it can seem that way absolutely but it really it's a piece of cake the oh, minute yeah. you realize that it's gone then it's back because you just realized it, and you brought it back to yourself. It's real, you know, if that's you can get rid of it, you can bring it back. You betcha. That's the whole thing about these two back. hands of energy, you know. Yeah, exactly. People come in for healing and say, I want to know where this came from. And I said, okay, I can find out where that came from. But the energy it takes is this hand of energy, and this hand of energy takes corrected. Yeah. So you can have your choice of hands. If you want to know, then I won't have the wherewithal to fix it or at least bring it back to balance and harmony as much as was to be at that time in that place. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not really healing work I do. I mean, I have to use that terminology so people can, Understand. so we can talk. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is I'm not really doing healing work. I'm returning people to balance and harmony as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. And people get miffed. They hear that word, I. Well, I is a metaphor for I as a team member. Or E-Y-E as in, you know, part of the greater collective whole because that's what works through us all when we're doing our work whatever it is so uh, there was a time you know early on in my first few years of healing work when I considered myself a channel yeah and my teacher just let me go and let me go knowing that I was walking on um, not the pro correct path at the time and finally a few years after I'd been into doing that I was a channel stuff they brought me in and basically the story was that in channeling I'm not doing a prime directive, which is to return the client to balance and harmony as best as possible. Yeah. So if I discount myself, my family bloodline as healers, my father's Austrian side of my family who are blue bloods, if I discount all of that stuff, I'm not achieving the prime directive, which is to do the best job possible. Yeah. So when the client lays down on the table, I realize that that client has the power and authority of Jesus Christ in them, and I ask them to pray for themselves. Like, mm -hmm. I pray for balance and harmony in a good way. Yeah. So that's one more ingredient in this salad bowl Yeah. to get the client closer to returning to balance and harmony. Yeah. So if I don't tap into their resources and power, because they do have the power of Jesus Christ, because he said so, and Bu and Allah, all inside of them, why would I not avail myself of that medicine? No kidding, yeah. And if they have like a pancreas or a gallbladder or ovary problem, I call in spiritual doctors from the light who serve the highest good of all, who specialize in liver problems. Wow. And that way I get who I need and who I want, and I, with my free will, specified only from the light, only from the highest good of all, for the time this light being is under my care on this table in this room. So it's basically a who, what, when, why, and where. Because when you're dealing with spiritual matters, I find that the more specific you are, 
the more results you can get, and that's closer to the prime director, which mm. is to do the best job we can do with what we have at this time. Yeah. So this is your passion in life. This is what you pursue as the healing worker. Is there is that the center core of it, the anchor of your life, or what? well, the the passion's a very big area, but I consider myself a passionate writer and a passionate musician, and I'm inspired. I'm an inspirational writer. Yeah. So when I wrote the five books, which took me 11 years, I would go to Australia, to the Darwin, and stay there for four or six weeks, and I go over to the Gold Coast and Surfer's Paradise, and I go there for four or five weeks. And then I go down to the Caribbean, off in Nicaragua, and in a little island, and stay there for six or eight weeks. So that's how the 11 years of writing got along, and on the road. I fixed up sick people, trained people in healing arts, and did lectures, which was enough to keep all the bills paid. Cool. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, nice when a person can do that and travel and deepen and broaden and just like, uh, wow. The experience. Yeah. And, and there's nothing like the diversity of the people that you meet when you travel. Yet you find common connections. Have you found this true, the common connections with folks in, in every nation that you've visited? Actually, you know? yes. And the main reason is because I walk in under a medicine umbrella. Yeah. And I walk in to the medicine people who are already established in their oh, communities. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then one of two things go on. Either they really are who they say they are and they know who I am or they aren't really who they say they are. And someone comes around who really is who they say they are. And that's when the fireworks start going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all these little conflicts, man. Oh, gee. I don't uh, need that stuff in our lives. An example in Australia. Be free, man. Be, be, be. An example in Australia, I went to Osho Temple because I really love Osho people and they're really good people. Yeah. And this guy was an Osho healer training his group for like about eight years. And what they did was they had four or five massage tables and then three or four people would stand around the table and one person would lay on the table and they would take turns back and forth, you know, practicing and doing techniques, healing work. Uh -huh. So uh, when I first walked in, I got challenged. The, the leader says, can you give us a demonstration? I said, sure, I'd love to give you a demonstration, but in a few minutes when I see what you guys are up to. Because <laughs> I've already been through this dance before more yeah. than once. Yeah. And so I let everybody work, and I seen what everybody was doing, and I looked around, because I am a bone doctor, and I looked to see who had some lower back pain, which I'm really good at. Yeah. And I spotted the one person, and I, after about 20 minutes, I said, okay, I'll, I'll give a demonstration now on this person over here. Would you mind? He said, no, no, please, come on. So he got on the table. He had uh, five to seven-year chronic lower back pain. He had been studying with this group for six or eight years, yet he still had the back pain. I put him on the table, worked on him for about six or eight minutes, and when he got off of the table, his eyes were big as silver dollars going, my back don't hurt no more, I don't feel no pain, there's nothing, there's nothing, this is impossible, this can't happen. And then the teacher looked at me, you know, with these really kind of like mean eyes, you know, like, yeah. I've been working on this guy for six years and you worked on him for six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is then, I was training healers in that group, energy, and, energy. and all the students in there, I invited them to come, and study with me, you know, of course, there's a tuition involved and there's prerequisites and there's screening. I don't train everybody who comes to me. And so when I left, he, the teacher told his students, I forbid you to go study with Two Feather. And half of the students folded their arms and left. Wow. And three quarters of them came and studied with me. And they told me that our teacher said that they can't study with nobody else, only him. Wow. And my teachers told me, my son, whatever I have done or whatever I can do, my mission is to make you stronger than I. To show you what your medicine is, not yeah. to give you medicine, but to direct you into your medicine. And that's what they did, but they never told me I was a bone doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you got to find all this stuff on your own. It's good. You know, that's 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 what a real teacher there that that will allow you. To surpass the, them. To the freedom. But that will, the only way you can do it, though, is by finding this stuff on your own. That's one way. It has to come from you, from your own heart. And that way, it's real. If it's something somebody else told you and you're mechanically doing it by road, even if it's mystical work, it's still uh, 
lacks that personal connection with your heart, kind of. I mean, there's a separation there. But when you've allowed yourself to go past all of that and get it yourself, to go into your heart deep enough, to go into the mountains deep enough, etc., to find your way, then, baby, you get something that's real and magic, and that's why you're able to do far more effective work than others, because you're more in tune with yourself, because mm -hmm. you found it within yourself. Besides the practices taught, you found it within yourself. You found it flowing through you. It began to educate you and bring you back to life so that you can share real life with people. Right, and that experience, yeah. you know, falling down, scraping your knees once in a while, you know, you really oh, get it that it's way. It's good for you. It hurts like hell, but it's good for you. But then you yeah. learn from it, and then you get on with it. You betcha. And that's the way, man. You know, that is the coyote way. That is <coughs> the real way, is to allow yourself to experience what you need to, to allow yourself to find inside of yourself the answers to every question. To be the source within yourself. We call that bear medicine. Yeah. We call that look, looks within medicine, which you would probably translate into introspection. Absolutely. Because the bear goes away in the cave and hibernates them by their self. Yeah. So all the questions and all the talk are to the bear himself. Because there's nobody else to talk to. And truly, all the answers lie within us. They're not going to, well, they can come, but they're usually within us. Yes. And if yes. we go within ourselves in, with bear medicine, then we can uh, access that, tap that. Understand the reality of your own person and then put that into practice in everything you do. The reality of your own sweetness, your own beautiful heart that really does care and doesn't really care about the money, just wants to get by in life and wants to be real. Yeah. And have there everybody should be an exchange. Be a happy life. You know? But it doesn't have to be money. It well, can it's be, always energy. Yeah, it, always. Yeah. 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 And then we do the 3D thing to solidify. Just like that's why I offer these coffee mugs. By the way, get your Coyote Club coffee mug, official coffee mug, thecoyoteclub.com, coyote spelled with a K, so it's club. Get over there and take a look, babies. You know, we're listener supported radio, by the way. I hope you're appreciating William Two Feathers here this morning. Awesome energy, awesome information here. A great, a great call. And what we got here? This is, is uh, the one of the hands, Healing Hands, it's a book. volume number five. Uh, by myself, William Twofeather. And this book here stands on its own, and basically what it is is a training manual <laughs> to train people in basic Native American healing arts. Wow, how cool is that? Baby? Now, it even has exercises to practice the techniques, like this particular exercise is a bowl of water with a leaf floating on top. And the mission is to go with four fingers with the medicine wheels in there, Go down, snap the leaf off the bowl of water without making a ripple. Wow. So it takes time, and that is an extraction technique. So if I want to work on your thyroids, I would use this extraction technique, which is perfected by doing the exercise until you can take that leaf out without a ripple. Wow. Now you can That's still really do good. the technique without with a ripple, but it won't be as effective. Yeah. So the this book here, and so... Um, this is one of the passions. Now, you notice this picture on the front with these two hands and this ball. I've heard Reiki practitioners go, wow, that's Reiki. <laughs> and I've heard uh, Maori say, oh, wow, that's Maori. And I've yeah. told, told Celtics and Druids say, hey, that's Celtic. Hey, that's Druid. Well, the fact of the matter is, if I slap a pool of water right here that's perfectly calm, ripples will go out in concentric circles. Yeah. And if I'm in China and slap water, Ripples go out in concentric circles. And if I'm in New Zealand or Australia, so that I you refer to... mean water's to the same all over the planet? <laughs> the natural order of the universe. And water can be programmed, as our very nice uh, Emoto guy has shown us. Oh, yeah. But Gee, it's not a big secret, you know. It's no. been, that knowledge has been around for many years, and I honor uh, Professor Emoto for all his work, you know, and yeah. bringing that to the consciousness of people. But that's what these books are about. My three teachers told me that with me, the knowledge goes six feet underground. And our young people are having a challenge about learning ways now because they're so distracted with video games and pimping hoes and gang banging and drinking liquor and gambling and getting pregnant at 13 years old Speed. and stuff. Speed, drugs, you know, all these demonic things are coming into play. And who's there for the teachers to train? So that's why they chose me because... Um, my background, and I didn't know why they chose me. I asked them later on, why did you choose me? I didn't choose you. 
I said, what's your background? I says, well, my dad made sure that I was the best of the best, no matter what it was. Even if it was spitting in the wind, I had to be best of the best. Cool. I was in swimming team, broke swimming records. I was captain of the water polo team. I went into a reconnaissance unit in the Marine Corps. In my university studies, I was always a Leah Honor student with academic uh, accolades. Yeah. And I was always on scholarships and academic grants and stuff like that. So I'm one of the native people who had the good fortune of a higher education. And I felt like all of that stuff, being a vet, you know, and being in martial arts since I was eight years old, was all part of gathering the foundation of who I am because to walk under a medicine umbrella, I'll just tell you straight up, you got to be a pretty tough person because the dark side don't want to see you help other people. And the dark side doesn't want to see you bring happiness or balance and harmony. The dark side's here to disrupt you and, that and cause was, problems. That, that was its lesson for a long time. That is in the process of transformation now. We are transforming that conception out of reality. It right. doesn't have a whole... It was, it was an illusion to start with. But anyway, yeah. yeah forgive me. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't help. So that transformation uh, process... Is exactly what you do. Is part of what I do. Uh -huh. And people ask, what is traditional Native American medicine? I get asked this quite often. And there's not really one standard answer because if somebody comes to you with cancer and somebody comes to you with lacerations on the brain, you're going to use two different techniques. Yeah. If somebody comes to you with a kneecap that's going to go in for replacement, then I would use plant medicine along with vibrational frequency medicine. Sometimes I don't even touch the client. I work in mind, body, and spirit, and for 15 years as a professional, uh, last year when I was in uh, Oslo, Norway, in November of last year, I had a schizophrenic come in and play me like a $5 cheap fiddle. Yeah. And I didn't like it. And from that moment forward, I felt like I had enough whiskers to say, I'm not going to work on any more mental disorders. And then I had an exorcism in the next country, in Denmark, which I've done many, many years of exorcism. And it was really a, a bad one. And I said, that's it, no more exorcisms. So what's happening now is I've given 10 years of my life to train. I've given 15 years of my life to be in service to others. And now I want something, which is different. I always ask for everybody else, yeah. but when I want something, it's a different program. So what I want is to have a family. Wow. And I couldn't have a family because I had made a vow with my flesh and blood in ceremony to serve the people, but there wasn't any specified time. So I feel well, like... it wasn't necessarily a pledge of celibacy either. You right. know? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's up to the teacher now. If you teach, if you train with a teacher who believes in celibacy, he will make celibacy a condition of your training. Yeah. But if you train with another teacher who don't like cigarette smoking, then his condition is no cigarette smoking. So as many different uh, uh, teachers out there, there's as many idiosyncrasies as we can come across. But my teachers told me that you have to make your own decisions, my son. That's what they told me. And they told me to keep us out of the public. Because we know you're a public person, keep us out of it. So I have to honor what they've said. And one time they got drug into my stuff, and it wasn't very good on me or them or anything, but it all worked out because when they showed their face and showed, told about you know their sacrifice training me for 10 years, and it was all over. Yeah. But the thing about Native American medicine is that the truth is the truth no matter what. That's mm -hmm. really what it all comes down to. That's it. And it's kind of like making a salad in a salad bowl. If you chop up ten heads of lettuce in a big bowl, you can go in there with a fork and say, I got a salad. But the nutritional value on the fork is L for lettuce. But then when you put in bacon bits and croutons and grapes and cottage cheese and na 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 you still got the same bowl, you still got the same fork, you still got the same mouth, and you're still going to scoop the same amount in your mouth, but now you have the nutritional value of B for bacon bits, C for cheese, and for nuts in the same mouthful. So that's the concept that I use to illustrate Native American traditional healing work, is if we're going to do 
We're going to call in plant medicine. We're going to call in animal medicine. We're going to call in color medicine. We're going to call in vibrational frequency medicine. We're going to call in spiritual doctors from the light who specialize in la, 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 la. So it's not just a one answer thing. It's a conglomeration of achieving the prime directive, which is to bring the client back to balance and harmony as much as possible at this time with what we have available to us. So I was doing this healing in Serbia. Uh, I was there for two months in Serbia. Front page in a newspaper, mag magazine articles, TV interviews, na 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 na. Fun. It, it was cool, you know. And then this lady came in who was all in pain, all decrepit, older lady, maybe 65. And she came in for healing, and my helper and I, because the law is, says in our, there must be two healers with one client at all times. That's the law. So during the healing, we were able to bring her back up to 70%, and then I got this knock on the head, stop. And I was going, oh, man, I could have finished it 100%, but I was told in a spiritual way. So I qualified. I said, if this is from the light, give it to me again. I got it again, so I took my helper outside and said, look, you know, the angels told me, and I say angels, you know, just for general purposes, but to me, they're spirit guides. Yeah. But anyway, the spirit guides told me that she had some karmic things to deal with and that I was not allowed to finish the other 30% because she needed to participate in the other 30% in order for it to stick. And I said, well, let's talk about it. So I went out and I told my apprentice at the time, the situation and she says well what's going to happen if you do it anyway I says I'll be punished but you can do it I said we can finish up to 100 percent she says are you willing to do that for this person who you don't even know and I says I don't know I haven't decided yet so all in all to make the long story short I decided to go along with the program fixed her up she was out of pain in this area she was her both legs were even now she was walking flat but this 30 percent went on and I knew there was something that wasn't coming out because I was told by the spiritual council that there was a karmic situation to deal with and I told my assistant and I told her I said look I don't think you're telling me everything here when you decide to tell me everything you tell my assistant and my assistant will do what she thinks is right and I gave my assistant full authority to deal with the situation as she seemed fit well it comes back that she her husband took off with the secretary at work who was one-third her age of course. Yeah. She got shoved out. <laughs> the new girl got brought in, you know, and then she went to the black voodoo person and put a curse on her husband so that his penis would not get erect anymore. Yeah. yeah. So she paid the bad person to put the voodoo kulam, point the bone at him. She pointed the boat at him, and then he couldn't get an erection anymore, and then his girlfriend left, you know, and then... Uh, she went and confronted him, and then she told him what he did, and then he pushed her down, and that's what broke her tailbone. And she got up and hit him with a frying pan. Oh, gee. It really knocked him a loop. So a couple weeks later, she came to my assistant and came clean and said, Look, you know, I put a curse on my ex-husband where his penis wouldn't get erect, you know, and then he pushed me down and broke my tailbone, and then I hit him with a frying pan and cracked his head, you know, and na, 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 na. And because she came clean with that karmic thing, you know, that she did something wrong, she acknowledged what she did, she was willing to atone for what she did, and this allowed her to finish up the last 30%. Cool. Just yeah, kind of that's, a cool that's story. That's often what it takes. You just got to come Sometimes. clean inside yourself, you know, yeah. yeah. So one of the tracks we heard earlier was off of this CD. Each one of the CDs have a medicine application. This one's medicine application is to it's called indigenous transplant is to help people with out-of-body experience oob in a safe way and it works with vibrational frequencies below the human hearing range change of chemistry in the body this one here i was nominated in the grammy music awards and i think it was 2001 and it's the first time we ever had a native american category we were always in world music or something like that. we didn't have our own they had blues and pop and funk and grunge and all that, but they didn't have no Native American. So finally, we got it in. I was nominated as one of the top five Native American artists on this, with this CD. There's actually seven of them now, okay. and uh, I think we have a couple more tracks to play sure. in a little bit. But it was important to talk about this Native American healing work because a lot of times, you know, people are curious and they want to know how all this stuff works. So yeah. that's the best way I can explain it. 
And we can give, like you said, a demonstration here. We can play, like, I think you got about 20 minutes worth of music here. We can play that for you. We'll just play it straight through here on the Coyote Medicine Show, only on the Hazy Radio Network, just so you guys can feel the effect and understand what these words are telling you. Yeah. Oh, and then also the vibrations are set into the music uh, below the audible hearing range in yeah. some of the songs, yeah. not all of them. Well, you know, i got to tell you, let you know a little secret. I share this all the time anyway, but, you know, all this good old rock and roll we play here, it's got the same kind of medicine in it in a different way. It's like got these little harmonies, these little vibrational harmonies that back in our day when my generation was waking up and throwing off the shackles mm -hmm. of that kind of slavery, vibration. it brought, yeah, it brought us forward. And now 50 years later, 60 years later, 40 years later, whatever it is, it's coming back and it's bringing us to another level. You know, it's it, the revolution going on now is twice, ten times as phenomenal as what happened in the 60s and 70s when we really opened up and started to live and love one another in a right sort of way, or at least looking for it. You know, we did. We blossomed like a son of a gun. We say, in a good way and with a good heart. Yeah, exactly. And it brought forward, I mean, it brought forward a lot of darkness too, but we're here to resolve that. Don't worry about that aspect of it. We'll deal with it. We are dealing with it, babies, and you're dealing with it. Fine. Find the love in every moment. Uh, how about, Find the how about callers? Do you, do you have callers on your show? Callers? Yeah, occasionally. Yeah, it's 719-285-7115. Uh, uh, if anybody wants, wants to call in, talk to William Two Feathers and myself. And uh, by you, uh, girl, ooh, babies, we got a dynamite team here this morning. You should pull up a chair over here and join in. What the was that? 281? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 281 was the number? It's uh, 719, oh. area code 719. Two eight five seven one one five. Now that's a toll call. I'm sorry I don't have the toll free number yet, but even if I did, around the world you still gotta pay a toll. So <laughs> babies, just do it. And one day I'll that get would be one nice. day I'll get Skype set up with my broadcaster so that I can talk to people all over. Wow, the world. that would be so cool. We'd yeah. love to hear from you I'm listeners. Working on, I'm working on that this week. I've got this new supercomputer that's totally capable of Multifunction while I'm while I'm broadcasting. And then that, you gotta learn how to use it. <laughs> oh, that's all right. It's the same as these others. It's just more. It's just more joyous. Wow. It's got 28 megs of RAM. It's got dual processors, three wow. gigs. You know, I mean, it's it's a super machine. Ooh, you know? yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's, made, it's made for AV work, and that's what it's going to do. Audio oh. and visual, baby, uh -huh. all at the same time. But that's yeah. Then I can do those kind of things more readily. I can maybe do it on this machine that I'm using now. It's got plenty of RAM and plenty of uh, power, your processing power, so they can probably do it, but they have glitches with Queen I've had nothing but poor luck with Skype. I've had all kinds of viruses come through Skype that I had to deal with, etc. So I'm really not too big on it, you know, plus they mistreated me uh, in the billing department and weren't apologetic about it. it. cost me all kinds of money that I didn't need to be spending in their area, you know, etc. So I've had some a hard experience with Skype, and if I can find another way to do it, like I'm looking at Google Hangouts too, but if mm. I can find another way yeah, to do it. Yeah, some kind of video stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, For interaction. Yeah, but I can't do that, you know, while I'm doing the radio show because of the music, you know, that's a right. whole different set of rights when it goes out over video, and you know, so mm. I have to be mm. cautious about that kind of stuff. Right, you know, on, on this word, passion. Well, like, have you ever tried that? Well, no, I can't do blog talk because they won't, they won't allow music. You'll get, you'll get oh, busted for rights yeah. right away. Yeah. See, here we're licensed. We've got our ASCAP thing going on. So we can play what we want to oh, play right. and do what we want on the radio. But on the video, it's a whole different set of rights that I have to deal with. And I'm not going to deal with it. I'm, I've tried. You know, I, I contacted the agencies that handle the rights and so forth. It's just everybody passing the buck. Nobody wants you to get out of that little rights question on the video right now. I'm sure it'll straighten out and somebody like Stream Licensing will come along in the video and we'll get this thing right. But until that happens, us as creators are kind of stuck with uh, that paradigm where the video cannot contain much music. You can use little 15, 20 second clips and get away with that. But that's about the extent of it. After that, you're going to get busted with the rights file. Right. And no, it doesn't. No, no. <laughs> Radio, like radio's that. the best way for it anyway, man. Better not to have all those crazy images that they got on those videos anyway, man. Some of that stuff's real crap. <laughs> Some of it's real artistic. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say a word on passion, though, because we, we started off in that area. Yeah, yeah, we all my, my personal here. passion is <laughs> Future by Design. And for those of you who never heard of Jacques Fresco, do yourself a favor and go look up the Venus Project. 
because Jock Fresco lives in Venus, Florida. I've been to his home. I've slept in this place. Roxanne has cooked dinner for me. And this is the smartest human being that I know of who walks the earth, who's still alive. He's got to be 96 or 97 at least. Wow. And I have been around many medicine people around the world, and I've been around intellectuals around the world at a lot of these metaphysical conferences. And there is not a two-legged human being on earth that is wiser than Jacques Fresco. He believes in future by design. And that's very in sync with Native American belief system because our belief system is the unborn. The ones who haven't even been considered to come down to this earth yet as Native American people and earth stewards, it is our mission to make sure that the unborn have a worthy place to come to. And that's where the struggle comes. The evil money, the evil greed, the evil material people will sell out their own grandchildren. You're, you're, you're gonna, I saw this when I was a child, but you're going to see some amazing... We are already, but you're going to see some real amazing changes in that area. This attitude of greed can no longer be maintained because of the status of the people of Earth, because we've risen up in consciousness enough to, these children. to eliminate <laughs> that kind of energy from our lives. And we are doing that. It will dissolve. Uh, these beings that have hoarded everything, they've got all the money, they stole like trillions, and not that long ago, ran it right right off from underneath the I'm American public nose, you know. Oh, it was after 9-11. Well, right after. It was like, I know, it was about 10 years later, they took like 17 trillion dollars, no, 35 trillion it was. In this, gold? 35 trillion in dollars, whatever that was, you know. And just hoarded it away. They've got all the gold now. They've got all the money. They've got everything. These beings that think they can have to control everything, they've got everything. And they've got nothing. They're waking up in the morning miserable as hell. They hate themselves. Well, when Ben Fulker and did an to, interview They're ready to do something different with it now. They're ready to do something different with it. And that's part of what we work on here in the Coyote Medicine Show is those beings too. Because they do listen in. And so we help them understand what's really going on and what their real empowerment is. We help them see the real heart inside. See, they didn't even know they had one. Most of these as uh, beings that control the world here as children are ritually abused. They're taken into dark training and they're given a, a status in their life which yeah, is essentially non-living. Not, yeah. Oh, he's just a mixed up guy. He'll yeah. come back. But it's essentially non-living. Non-living. You don't even know you have a life. You're totally a robot to this energy that controls you. You know, it's been there for generations now. It's passed through your family quite often. And it's not you there. It's something else. Something has taken over you completely and operates through your bodily person. You know, yes. that. But so we're working on these people. We're helping them see that darkness, that control, dissolve away and their heart come into play. And they all of a sudden start to realize they are a loving being. At first they hate it. It drives them crazy. And then they start getting used to it. And you're going to see now in this world, say in the next two, three months, some of the most amazing financial sweeps you've oh, ever seen. Oh, it has to happen. Completely, it has to a happen. Complete obliteration, a complete obliteration of the system as we know it. It's failing us anyway. It, it and we can't, can't go let on. it go down in the darkness and try to take all of us with it because that's their plan. Then they can impose martial law, etc. That's what that's they want. Plan. They want to take the guns it's not, away. It's not happening, baby. It's just not going down. Because the hearts that we're working yeah, we're with, Americans. That, we're more than Americans, we're, we're one tribe. We yeah. are one we, tribe. We believe in freedom, we, you know. Yeah. When, when you've in been in many beings. countries, as I have, and you've seen, like in Australia, when they took the guns away from the people, the crime went, went, went up exponentially. Home break-ins and home invasions were just rampant. And I would take a country like Switzerland, where every house has a f firearm, and compare it to a country like Australia, who the guns have been taken away from the people, and let's see what the crime rates are. Yeah, but what I've been, what I've, somebody put this up on Facebook the other day, a neat little saying, until you're done with guns, you're not free. That's right. As long as you need guns, you're not free. You see, we're playing into the old paradigm there. That's the fear paradigm. We don't yeah. need fear. We are love, we are light, and the more we can live in that, you know, it's light and dark together, but the more we can live in that, then the more protective. You see, I've, 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 I was raised with a gun in my hand, basically. I was raised in a Western culture, and that was part of growing up, with the guns and hunting deer and stuff like that, you know, shooting birdies and out of trees and things like that. Oh, we thought that was such fun. 
man, I was such a troubled kid. You said drive me nuts. Finally, at 21, I realized I just can't. I, I missed a shot. A poor deer got injured, and I couldn't find him. And that was it for me. I says, I'm done. And I can't do this anymore to the deer. You know? Oh, I'll never forget the first deer I ever shot. Broke my fucking heart. It still does. <laughs> you know? And I honor the animal for giving me its life and allowing me to participate in its meat. And, you know, I'm totally... Yeah, we did share a little bit about tobacco medicine yeah, last night. Can yeah. you recall that teaching? Uh, not exactly, but what my opinion on tobacco I expressed yesterday here on the on the radio show basically is that it's an honored herb and it should be treated with respect. It's a healing herb just like Mary Jane is, and it deserves the same gracious respect. And you guys are out of your tree picking on smokers like you do. They're the, they're your new uh, well, I hate to say <laughs> yeah. words, so I won't say it, but they're yeah, the ones yeah. who ride in the back of the bus, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. Come on, guys. you got to wise up. Smokers are not evil. Yeah. yeah everybody you know? has something, you know. Right? Tobacco the, isn't Let the person who herb. hasn't yeah. seen cast the first stone. Exactly. That's what I like you know? to say. Me, for me, tobacco is a grounding element. You know, I do so much energy work, and I'm so filled with energy at all times, and it comes from all directions. And so the tobacco helps me center it and ground it. You know, it's a transformative prayer. Each and every toke I take in tobacco or Mary Jane, either one, but tobacco in particular, it's a grounding energy for me. Right. And it's absolutely necessary in my life. No matter what other effect it creates, it's absolutely necessary in my life at this time. And, I ha and, and I've done it for like probably, I quit for like 12 years. You know, I, I started when I was just a little kid. I smoked till I was like 30 and then I had some health problems and I had to give it up for a while. You know, just for similar reasons to why I have to do it now. I needed to get out of it for a while. I had too much damage in my lung from other things that I had to clear up in my body. And it took me years to do it, but I did get it done. And, and <laughs> tobacco. So allowing it, it's not going to make you sick. No, it doesn't. When you bless whatever, whatever, you can yeah. drink arsenic and bless it and it won't hurt you. If you're in that loving vibe. Now, don't go and try it just to prove it. But if somebody should ever accidentally... Do that to you. Well, we are not recommending that. No, no, we don't. We're not the kind to go out and get bit by a rattlesnake just to show that we can. Bullshit. Well, I hope it's a big yeah, one, not it, a little one. <laughs> <laughs> the little ones have concentrated venom. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. They do. But it, it's like if any anything. These are just examples. Anything in your life, no matter what it is, if you're in it with the blessings of love, if you're feeling it from the heart, your whole experience is transformed. There is no harmful effect in anything. Well, I love you can move share. beyond the fear because you don't have anything to be afraid of anymore because everything you do is beneficial to you and others. It's a whole different state of being. It's 180 from where we've been as human beings, as a collective, let alone as individual persons, each of us trying to pursue our own individual little path and letting the powers that be or were tear us apart, keep us fighting each other. Yeah, that's what Keep they do. Keep us looking at each other they down one with John disguise. You're evil, and obviously you need to be shot and killed, so let's have a war. <laughs> I mean, you know, insanity, baby, big time. This energy is dying. This energy is dead already, and it's just dying inside of you. And what that means is transforming. This is transfiguration as opposed to transition, which is death. This is transfiguration, which is finding life in your death. It's very similar to dying. You're feeling a part of yourself dying. It's beautiful. Well, de it death is a very let interesting thing. Let it go. Let it, let it be. Let it in die. Because when it comes world, back to life, it, it'll resurrect itself immediately. The moment it dies inside, it'll resurrect itself immediately. And there you are, back to life in wholeness. See, we have five aspects of death in the Native American world. Yeah, well, we're, we're eliminating death from here now. But anyway, yeah, the five but aspects. These are the traditional belief yeah. systems. Yeah. One is that when you die... You go to the other side of the Milky Way, and your spirit stays there until Creator brings all the spirits back to the world. That's one. Two is the happy hunting ground. Because there's over 500 tribes in America, and only one of them is Apache, and then we got a whole bunch of them. So the other is that... Yeah, there's many different kinds. So the other aspect is that... Uh, we go to the happy hunting ground and at the happy hunting ground there's this river and every time the river bends it gives food or blankets yeah so when you die you're up there in the happy hunting ground the third aspect is um, what we call uh, reincarnation but there's two aspects of reincarnation 
One aspect is that we reincarnate as an animate being, a sentient being. And sentience is based on homeostasis, which means that you're able to feel and heal yourself. The next aspect is that we reanimate as an inanimate object, and here's where we get a little uh, bit on the two in the gray area, because what is an inanimate object? Some people would say that a tree is an inanimate object, but to us, a tree is alive and has a spirit inside, so you can reincarnate as a, a spirit, like a, a tree an or object. flower or whatever. Yeah, yeah, a tree or a flower, or you could be a salamander or a bird. Or a stone. Or you could come back again to relive everything again because you haven't learned your lessons yet until you go on to ascension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come yeah. back and repeat the same life. It does happen, yeah. yes. And yeah. for that, you Time know, is, very malleable. It is yeah. the future. Yeah. And this book right here called Juventud is in Spanish, but this is a book called Youth, and the youth book has four adult books inside of one youth book, and this book here is already a textbook in Montessori schools in Mexico because it's in Spanish. So every page has art on one side so that the young person can be engaged, and on the other side, either they read phonetically or someone reads to them. Yeah. And this is the culmination of 11 years of writing, 10 years of apprenticeship, and, you know, probably about six or eight years of healing work when the books got started and went up to 15 years. So these books are not available yet in print, but right now I'm getting ready to launch ebooks. And ebooks has been a very mystical place for me because I spend all the time making them, I spend all the time learning, and it feels like I shouldn't have to do all this ebook stuff and all this Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble. So maybe there's a marketing genius out there that wants to get on the on the pony ride here, you know, and help out with getting some of this stuff out. Seven CDs, five books. Well, cards in, for telling the future. How, how do they get a hold of you? I mean, do you have an email, a phone yeah, number? What you got? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a website called twofeather.com. Cool. The number two and the word feather. Oh, cool. And that has an email link there, but my actual email is my name, William two T W O feather, William two feather nine 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 at gmail dot com. Okay. Cool. William so, Feather at gmail nine 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 at gmail dot com. So if anybody wants to reach me, you know, I'll get to you because I'm on the internet quite a bit. Yeah. You can type that out on the chat room when we go to our break too. Oh, I don't know that too. Wonderful. We'll put the link there, you know, too, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, anything that's in program we put links up for, you know. Oh man, so, that'd be great. Yeah, Twofeather dot com. Yeah. yeah and I would sure. really love to see a link to YouTube because I have nine videos up on YouTube. Oh, cool. And if you put in William Two Feather web TV because a lot of, when you're in the light and like for example I've been doing exorcisms for over 10 years uh -huh. I've trained spiritual warriors in spiritual warfare for the light all yeah. around the world yeah. usually I use a Boy Scout camp because I could feed 30 people at lunch and I could put 60 people to bed at night yeah. and so I trained all of these warriors in spiritual warfare there's no certificates there's no papers there's nothing and when I get done with the training with them in spiritual warfare and the light, I let them all know that they have a blessing from Two Feather to be a recruiter and take everything that they've learned in spiritual warfare for the light and go out there and recruit other people and become teachers. Cool. Because I can tell you this, the dark side is gathering their army. And they've been gathering their army for quite a bit of time. And how do I know this? Because... When someone goes into the community and deals with the sick people, you have your three fingers on the pulse of the community because I measure communities and countries and languages by their sick people. And when I do healing work, normally I'll get one exorcism out of 20, one exorcism out of 30. Sometimes I get two exorcisms out of 10, but never do I get every other person exorcism. So I was in Sydney, Australia, which is a recruiting center for the dark side, and every other client, 70 people for eight days, 10 a day, almost every other client was an exorcism. Wow. So how can I just come from Tokyo and one out of 20 be an exorcism? How can I just come from Scotland and one person out of 11 be an exorcism? I mean, yeah, now I'm here in Sydney and every other person is an exorcism. Mm. So I've determined that 
the dark side has these recruiting centers around the world, and my estimate is that from downtown Sydney, it goes out 60 miles in all directions, yeah. including the water people. Yeah. Is it pretty messed up right now? Oh, yeah. and, 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 and the government in Australia, when I was there, said, we're going to put a cap on everybody's well, we're going to put a meter on everybody's well, and we're going to make you start paying for the water. And, and the people said, my grandpa drank from that well. My great-great-grandpa drank from that well. We founded this place with our blood and bones and our ancestors, and we have a right to drink our own water without you paying. But guess what? They took the guns away from the Australian people, and they got nutted. They got neutered. And, and the 500,000 people were in protest downtown Sydney. I was there that day and got boosted up on stage by the supporters. And they were protesting, but so what? They're still paying for water, and the wells are still capped. And, you know, I've heard they wanted to do that in America, too, but only if we let them. Only if we let them. That's the big secret right there. Wow. If they have the Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Off-grid. Yeah. Off-grid. Yeah. Off-grid serves Mother Earth. We, we, we serves the people. Well, like, no, like that's I criminal. Say, you're going to see huge sweeping changes in these kind of attitudes and behaviors now. And all I'm advising people to do is stay inside your heart and grow. And just let this world around you be what it is for a bit. Deal with it where you Permit have. Permit the light. But just let yourself be. Let yourself come forward naturally. And you become empowered. And then things change greatly I hope. here. I hope. The more of us that join in this revolution, I hope. the quicker it happens. And you won't have to do open protests. You won't have to fight them in the streets. Send love. Just send, yeah. love. Just send the love, man. And people just, say, one person, please what let can I do? Beings, please let these well, beings become enlightened. Make that your prayer. One person please. can change the world. Look at Hitler. Yeah. I mean, look at Einstein. Look at, you know, Pasteur. One person changed the world. Yeah, yeah. He died. He died in Argentina. Did you know that? Probably. An old man. Yes. I think it was last year he died. Of old yeah. age, yeah. yeah. But my point was, one person can change the world. Yeah. And so the people that say. Yeah. 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 Transmute them. When a million people do that, we're going to have a different situation. Yes. Yes. Right. And for 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 the other for the other people, organite organite transmutes. Chemtrail. Yeah, so, for those of you, you for those of you out there who never heard that word before, the more people that have organite and consciously counteract the chemtrails, the more we're going to make a difference in the world. Yeah, yeah. And you can use that and use the cell towers as a transmitter. Explain that. That's not clear. The organite, the organite takes away the harmful energy from the cell tower. Cell towers. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Notice they put them right near schools and stuff all over this country. Right, I travel right. this country a lot, and I see that. And them smart meters too. You right know, when they put there. them smart oh, yeah, meters, people yeah. start getting sick, and you got to pay an extra ten dollars if you don't have a smart meter. Please do not get a smart meter and pay the extra ten dollars. Consider ten dollars a month to your health. Exactly. You know, worth it. Exactly. This is how you get. Yeah, Imagine exactly. this energy yep. going forth, mm. and Oregon is she's, wonderful. She's putting out the cover of Healing Hands, Volume 5. Yeah, with the hands with the glow in between the, the right. healing hands with the glow this, in This between. is our energy. This is at our command. Just like I say, pick up a cup of tea, I could use this ball of energy the same way because I have the power and authority because I say so. Yeah, exactly. Because that's our superpower. That is. <laughs> when you're living in the heart, you have complete divine authority in everything that you do, in everything that you and, are. And the living in the heart has a symbol in the Native American way. It's like this. It says, if you have a question about what is and what isn't, the way to get the answer is to ask your heart because your heart will always tell you the truth. It does. The thing is that because I hear a voice from the outside doesn't mean it's, it's in the light. 
And I like to use a qualifier. If I get this words or this feeling or this thought, I should go to Mount Shasta or something, I ask, if this is from the light, give it to me again. And I would love the listeners out there to take that home with them because what's the big deal about qualifying where you're getting your information from and your directives blindly? I invoke will, which is one of our strongest powers as two-legged human beings. I invoke the power of will to say whom I will and will not work with. And if I don't get that thought again, I have qualified them out as not being from the light because I only allow the light to say it again. Yeah. Hold and talk best. Because I say so. Because I say so. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the church of I. You know, I am. I am, and we are. <laughs> and we is. <laughs> yeah, the isms, you know. Is is, is is the foundation of Aboriginal dream time. Yes. There is no past. There is no future. There only is here and now. Here and now. And, and, and it's what we remember in the past and future. That's and, it. And, and the right way here. we deal with that is yeah. the way, usually, that we're indoctrinated. We're indoctrinated as should be logical. It should be reasonable, and it should make sense. But when you're dealing in the spiritual realm, there's different laws. And the laws that we grew up with don't necessarily apply in the spirit world, because in the spirit world, when we do a spiritual healing on breast cancer, and if the breast cancer is gone in an hour, and you could feel it's not there anymore, it doesn't make sense. It's not reasonable, and it's not logical, but it is. Because they could go back to their thing, have a mammogram done, and it's gone. So it is. That's the foundation of the circle in the American world, the medicine wheel, has no beginning, has no end, but it always is. Is. Yep, that's it. That's it's the now. That's the, is. the now thing. Yep, exactly. The now and the Tao and everything that Christ ever created and Muhammad too. That's all. You see, but it doesn't yeah. make sense when you're talking about future by design. But you're taking it in our terminology instead of spiritual terminology. Yeah. Because future by design is a spiritual aspect of leaving a worthy place to our youth, the ones that are unborn, and it doesn't have to make sense. Who says it has to make sense? I, I, I couldn't draw on face to save your life because I couldn't make the eyes match. Yeah. And I met a university professor, art teacher, who said, why do the eyes have to match? And then after that, I started doing art. <laughs> it was an epiphany. Uh, we we could speak right, about epiphanies, stuff, but yeah. oh boy, that, those are breakthroughs. Epiphanies, for those who don't know, are breakthroughs in spiritual terms, emotional terms, and very human and real terms. There you too. go. Yeah. Remember, also preceded by a breakdown. remember, everything we do in spirit has to be and is grounded in humanity, which is then grounded in this earth. See, in other words, it all comes from this earth. Comes forward from the generosity of her gracious heart. Right. That's who we are. Everything comes the children from of the earth. And so, we are we're totally and completely with her, and she's totally and completely with us. Each of us is the Mother Earth and the universe. And, the and that's a very big thing, because a lot of times when we do medicine plants for spiritual purposes, not for going to parties, the medicine plant goes into us, gathers up what doesn't serve the highest good of us, yeah. and then expels it. And a lot of people call that getting sick and vomiting, but in the native culture, we call that getting well. Yeah, getting because, out of you. Yeah. Because you, before you go up into the spiritual realm, in this other arena that we're not used to with the assistance of the medicine plants, you need to be cleansed first. Yeah. And the, when we cleanse, we say get well. When we give the vomit back to Mother Earth, everything that she gave us, we're giving back. And there's that circle again, that uh, uh, give and take kind of thing, which is Aboriginal dream time, which is Native American medicine wheel teachings. And Celtic and Druid, they got their medicine wheels too. Yeah. And yeah. they're circles and they have four directions. Yeah. Different animals, they got different beliefs, but conceptually they're the same because the truth is the truth. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the way it works. Yes, yeah. Dunjo. And, and, and the, and the uh, energies also of the directions also represent the juncture of love, which is humanity. Which again is the Mother Earth, of course. We as her children, but each one of us, that's what the cross like or the the Nazi symbols and so forth. That's what they all point to, is the junction of all loving energies. That's what we are. All of it comes into us and then it begins to glow and it flows and it becomes this spiral torus and it becomes creation. And we consciously create when we're living in that space. You know, I'm if looking we're at the... frustrated, it doesn't do that. I'm looking at the board here and someone wrote, the dark, the dark ones only have as much power as we give them. That's true. Okay, well, it's okay, you know, I can, but I would like to disagree with that because 
whether we give the dark side power or not, they already have power and authority. And in the Apache world, we keep our friends close but our enemies closer. Yeah. And the moment you underestimate your enemy is the moment you give your possible advantage away. And if you say that it's only the power that we give them, you're eliminating the plus and minus of everything else because I'm very tough on absolutes. Always, never, can't. Yeah. The dark side can be empowered by us giving them power. But that doesn't mean that they don't have power. A war means there's a winner and a loser. And there's a war going on here, and it's becoming more and more prevalent called everybody wins the spiritual this battle. And, and I, on my, on my YouTube, yeah. I have a six-minute video called The Spiritual War. Please go see it, and, and you'll see the Native American perspective of this. But do not underestimate the dark side, please, because you're giving your power away. And you need all the power you can. And us as light warriors need to acknowledge the dark side as having power and authority, but only in a limited way. And I understand what you're saying about that. And you're right in many ways, but I don't want to let it go into an absolute. Well, as long as you live in fear, the darkness has power. That's the way I see it, you know. And the moment you get, are, are able to give up the fear, see beyond it, because you can't just throw it away. Because that fear is very real, and the threat is very real in the way you're living it. We create it. That's what he's referring to. We create that. We give that power by fearing it, or by living in fear and inviting that to us. Right. So the solution then is to like simply live in love, keep allowing yourself to grow, open in the heart. Only this, to the light. Let this well it serves focus, the highest good of focus, all. Focus, focus, the highest good is in everything, the light and the dark. It's, there's no division. This is the illusion. Let this illusion pass away. Let yourself see yourself as you truthfully are. The more loving you become in that state, the more empowered you are in the spiritual reality, which is creation, living in human form. In other words, you can change everything. No one can come to you. If you're in that space, no one can come to you. I, I can give an example. With harmful intention and hurt you at all. Nothing can hurt you. A bullet can be flying away. It will dissolve My when teacher it comes said into that. that influence. You know? So it's really... Us just realizing our magic in the love. And that's what allows us to let go of the fear. That's what disempowers what we see of the darkness. And when we let go of that hold we have on darkness, that's when it disempowers itself and completely disintegrates into the rainbows of love that it was made of. Rainbow warriors. Yeah, that's exactly it. These that's are, our these future. Are the, the satanic ones, the luciferian, these, the draconians. must have a counterpart. These are, these are ancient, beautiful souls that got themselves trapped in an unusual reality and learned to enjoy and forgot who the hell they were. So our whole humanity experience mostly has been to bring those brothers and sisters back into the fold of the heart. So they remembered that's what they were and that's who they are. And we, re -remembering. We're, we've done it, we have accomplished it, and we're just putting the finishing touches on it now, baby. It's, it's happened. ED. It's over. You know? Now... No, it's fear, yeah. Exactly. How are we looking on time there? Well, yeah, we're just about over with. You know, we're, we're going to say bye-bye here pretty quick. And well, can can get I get in a, a promo thing here? Oh, please do, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, the last group of healers that I trained was in Denmark, Copenhagen in December. And the month before that, I trained a group of healers, Native American Healing Arts, in Oslo, Norway. And before that, Tokyo, Japan, and before that, Sydney, Australia, and before that, Slovenia, Koper. The point is that at the end of this week, which is a few days away, in Taos, I will be training a group of healers. This will be the only training in America, because I leave America in the end of October for a year. And anyone who's interested in Native American healing arts know this, that everybody will be screened before they're accepted as students. There's a tuition involved. And anybody who's interested in possibly coming to this weekend's training, you send me an email and I will send you a copy of the flyer. If you have Skype, I can screen you over Skype and save you a long journey because I can guarantee you this. Not all people will be trained who come with their tuition on the table because it's I call it the CYA program, Cover Your Arse. And anybody that I train in healing arts that uses that to hurt someone else, the karmic responsibility comes right on my shoulders. I should know better, and I do know better, and I will not train these kind of people. The other thing is that these five book, four books that... I've written five books, but only four are going to go in English. 
we could really use some help out there because it's going to cost a thousand dollars per book to put these books into ebooks the way that I want to do it. And if there's anybody out there in a listening audience who believes Native American oral history put into pen is a worthy thing to share with the world, if you can make a small donation through PayPal to my email address, which is William Two Feather nine 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 at gmail dot com. If you just put 5 or $10 in there, by as many listeners as there could be, all of this knowledge could be ready on Amazon.com as ebooks as early as December. And the other thing is that in the world, as we get into whom we are, the more that we could use our special gifts to be in service to others, the happier the world can be. Let's design our future by having a say-so in designing our future. See Jacques Fresco of the Venus Project. And let your heart go into the unborn. Let your efforts and energies be in service to others, even if we can't even see their faces. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, babies. Live in the heart. You show that you care. And babies, all you can do from there on is share and share. It's a beautiful uh -huh. life, and we love each other. Uh -huh. And we're living in it, babies. Living Grandpa, it. I'm so grateful for you, to know you as a human being, to see your work, and to acknowledge the sacrifice that you have to make to sit in this chair, because people can't see it on the air, but I can tell you right now that for Grandpa to sit in this chair, he has to go through constant challenges, constant adversities, and in face of all of this stuff, he's still sitting here. He may have to move around. He may have to ju jump and hop and bop a little bit, but he is still sitting in this chair. Fucking hell. Ah ho. Ah ho. Yeah, you got it. You are too, baby. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, William. So Appreciate I support that. Grandpa Coyote in his ways. We don't agree on everything, and that's okay. You know, oh, I'm, don't I'm, have to, I'm okay to, to disagree on a few things because we're grown ups and we can do that. We're big time. Yeah. <laughs> we don't got to buck heads. We don't got to piss on each other or spit or nothing. You just go. There ain't no war. I wonder you know, what you're going to do after you know, this yeah. show. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oops. Cough my lungs out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I hope we can get one caller in here what, well, before two nobody, minutes. Nobody's calling, too late. otherwise I would have heard it. Yeah, okay. It's too late. Now we've right, got right. two, three minutes. So another day. I'd love to come another let's day. Let's roll out of here on, on uh, William Two Feathers' uh, happy song. We'll oh, little, Made in China little, with little Chinese dope. Elders. Made in China with Chinese Elders. This has got to be good, baby. So you got the Coyote Medicine Show, Grandpa Coyote, and our special guest today, William Two Feathers, and the Bayou Girl, baby. The new mystery <laughs> guest here from Mopar, yes. baby. Is that very highly intelligent and wise? Yes, fine uh, lady. Oh, I tell you, a and, heart of gold, a heart of gold. Baby. And that's William Two Feather with no S. Okay. Uh, you got south. his email stuff, and we'll post it up here on the chat. Oh, yeah, good idea. Off the air. Good idea. And, babies, you will be rocking and rolling. And so, well, where's and my wife? Strolling. Yeah, 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 baby. Where's my wife? Who wants to Who wants to grow their own food and, and build their own earthship and oh, have children? Yeah. He's, he's looking for an old lady, babies. Um, take, yeah. take, take forever, your, get though. Get your Only pencils one. out, man. <laughs> Only one forever. Montessori schools, grow our own food, earthship, hybrid, you know, the whole cha-cha, off the grid. Awesome, man. Now, see, i got to get 30 seconds of this song in here. I have to, you know. Here we go, baby. We love you here at the Coyote Medicine Show, only on the Hazy Radio Network. See you at 7 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning, babies. Enjoy. Yeah. Woo.